The summer is coming and I haven't made any tear down for a long time. So for this time I have this mosquito killer. It's electric RL mosquito killer with a high voltage power network intensive can escape in a small mosquito and a humanized hook switch. Oh my god, something is probably getting lost in the translation. Using limits and the last using method. That's also interesting. And if you want to read this one, you can stop the video for a while. It's a type XL218, so they don't know anything about vanity sizing. And I feel really fat when I have to buy this. It arrived in a plastic bag and the corners of the box are slightly compressed. It cost me about seven dollars, including shipping and it says LED, but I'm sure this is a fluorescent tube. But anyway, I believe that the LEDs can't still replace ultraviolet fluorescent tube in this type of application. And the picture in the listing shows what does it kill. So it kills mosquitoes, okay, it kills flies, that's okay. It kills cockroaches, maybe, and wait, it's a mouse or a rat? Seriously? Are you kidding me? Just imagine the mouse or a rat crawling through this grid and getting zapped. So this is your room, this is the killer hanging from the ceiling as the manual suggests, and this is the mouse. And is the mouse supposed to fly up and crawl through the mesh? Or is it supposed to run like this? Climb up the wall and up the ceiling and down to the killer? I'm not sure. But anyway, let's finally open it up. So here's the device. And it comes with the Chinese plug. It also comes with an adapter and some brush probably for cleaning. That's useful. So there's time for testing. Let's plug it into the adapter and plug it in. And there's the switch. And it lights up. Okay, it flickers. Wait. Did it die? Are you kidding me? It died. It's really not working. Wait, I can smell something. It smells really horribly. It's burning. So I think that's time to open it up. But let's discharge the capacitors first. Nice. And honestly, I'm not very sure about the safety of this device because you can very easily put your fingers through it and touch the grid. So let's take it to bits. There are two screws from the bottom. And there's the fluorescent tube and the killed mosquito container. And this is also how do you clean it. So let's take the tube out. I'm really interested what kind of tube this is. Strange. And it looks like E14 base. Is it screwable? Yes. So this is the tube with a standard E14 base and is it made of plastic? That's weird. But yes, it's really a soft plastic. 
and there is some cover wait is it a fluorescent tube or not It's not a fluorescent tube. It's just one five millimeters LED. That's really disappointing. What initially looked like a fluorescent tube finally turns out to be just a standard five millimeters LED. So let's test it separately. Is it gonna work? It works kind of. Oh, it flickers. It looks like something's burning inside. And it smells. Let's try to open it up. Okay, the plastic part is gone. And there is a tiny circuit board which suddenly pops out. So there is just a bridge rectifier, a Zener diode, two resistors and the ultraviolet LED. There's nothing else in it. I'm not sure how does it work. I have absolutely no idea what is dropping the main voltage here because the resistors are only 47 ohms each and that's a really low value. This is just a base without anything else in it. There is no resistor, no dropper capacitor or anything. So I have reverse engineered the schematic of the fluorescent tube which is actually not fluorescent and there are just two 47 ohms resistors in it and one is before the bridge and the other one is after the bridge but in reality they act as a single resistor. This has the same effect as putting them in series so the total resistance is 94 ohms. And if 230 volts was coming into the circuit the current would be I equals U over R and this is 230 volts divided by 94 ohms and this is 2.45 amps and the power dissipation of the circuit would be P equals U times I and this is 230 volts times 2.45 amps and it equals 563 watts and of course this equals insanity. So if the circuit was connected directly to mains its dissipation would be more than 500 watts and that's impossible. So it must be connected to something else. I was actually connecting it to mains for a while and it worked but this was probably because this resistor is already burned and its resistance is now much higher. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And I expect there is some capacitor in a series with the fluorescent tube or actually a fake fluorescent tube and I think there is some voltage doubler for the grid. Let's see. There are about six screws in it. it and now a great surprise and here we go there is some circuit board so the mains comes in it goes through the switch then it goes to the board the board is connected to the grid and 
in the board there are seven capacitors, seven diodes and two resistors. One of those resistors seems to have been on fire. I will try to reverse engineer the schematic. Finally there's the schematic and it's one confusing jungle. I still have no idea how does it work. So I have drawn another schematic and finally it starts to make sense. There are in fact two completely independent circuits. One is the high voltage multiplier and the other one is the light source. This rectangle is what's inside of the fake fluorescent tube. This one is more or less a normal multiplier with five stages. It has five capacitors and five diodes. There's an inrush resistor and this circuit will multiply the mains voltage by five. It is five times 220 volts times 1.414. And this is about 1550 volts. But the strange part is that those capacitors are different values. Some of them are just 47 nano and the other ones are 390 nano. And they are all rated 400 volts. But they are going to handle twice the peak value of the mains which is 620 volts. So those capacitors are quite significantly overloaded. But this is normal in China. This is not the strangest part of the circuit. The strangest part is this circuitry. If there wasn't this network, it would be just a capacitive dropper in series with this bridge rectifier and LED and it would be completely okay. But with this circuitry, it makes no sense. There is something like a voltage doubler in front of the LED, which is completely crazy and in fact those two diodes in series bypass this dropper capacitor. So one half cycle of the mains goes through this resistor, through those two diodes and through this very low resistance resistor, through the bridge, another resistor and into the LED. Those two resistors are completely burned. And this one is so black I can't read its value. But it probably was a low resistance resistor so its power dissipation was so high it simply combusted. This is the mysterious resistor, now completely black. And I think it was a low value resistor. I believe it was intended as an inrush resistor and it wasn't meant to handle full mains voltage. So I still can't figure out what was the original idea behind this design. But maybe it was originally meant to power up some small fluorescent tube, which required a voltage doubler for its operation. The only explanation is that it was originally meant to power up some classic fluorescent tube, and later it was retrofitted with LED. But when retrofitting it, they probably didn't realize that this is not just a simple capacitor dropper. It's a doubler with those diodes bypassing the capacitor. But because of this design flaw, the entire device becomes just a pile of rubbish that is going to combust just few seconds after you power it up. So the title was finally right about the LED in it, but it's definitely not worth the money. And by the way, where the cable is going in the picture, do you see it? So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.